Hello everybody, welcome back to Mohamed Rahimi Online Baseball Clinics. Today uh, we are pleased to welcome Mr. Saratan Radovich, a very special guest from Croatia. It's maybe a pleasure to have you. And uh, today he will be sharing with us uh, his expertise knowledge on the on sportmanly uh, topic. Uh, with that, I ask to give you I ask to you uh, give your full attention to the Radovich and stay mute. Don't open your mic. Uh, please and uh, anyone can ask a question at the end of our webinar uh, now uh, everyone can see a little bit a summary of uh, certain rather which carrier uh, highlights and also I uh, send it uh, to whatsapp group everyone uh, I think uh, watch that uh, so uh, let's start uh, dear certain you can start it thank you very much Mohammed. <laughs> It's a privilege and the honor to be here and to speak with you, to tell you some of my experience, but also to hear from you some of your experience, because uh, although I'm 52, I'm still learning and I'm trying to improve every day, every practice, every game, every webinar, and to make my... my uh, fundus even larger and to know some more details some more examples and to be a better referee tomorrow as Mohammed said and i thank him very much for inviting me here i'm a euroleague referee now and i also officiate adriatic league which is ex-yugoslav league uh, i am active fiba referee instructor with the license but you know as euroleague referee i'm uh, focused on my games and uh, my work within these two associations and maybe in the future there will be better days and we will be able to work and to cooperate together uh, the topic about unsportsmanlike like fouls is a very interesting one because uh, of the most severe because there are two free throws or if the goal counts, one additional free throw and possession. And also by correctly referring the unsportsmanlike fouls, uh, we are helping ourselves to maintain game control and game management. Because if uh, we don't have the same criteria, I'm not saying just uh, three referees in one game. I'm saying all the referees in competition or all the referees in, in, in basketball, then the players will have the right to ask uh, ourselves, why you call this and yesterday in the game was called like that or why you call this and two minutes ago you didn't call that. So we are trying to, to do it uh, with the consistency and we try to do it so everybody can understand what we are doing on the court. You know that in uh, basketball officiating, we have some things which are a uh, matter of judgment and the other are just... Uh, something that that it's like that and uh, there is no judgment in it so if it's out of bounds that the ball touches the line there is no judgment if you if you saw it you have to call it and that's it about fouls it's a little bit different because we have to judge if somebody if the the the, the contact was uh, big enough to uh, affect RSBQ or to, to, to do anything uh, to put some players in advantage or disadvantage. And as uh, unsportsmanlike fouls through the history were uh, judged uh, differently, then uh, FIBA and uh, also NBA and EuroLeague, but mostly uh, FIBA for uh, our basketball world, uh, they try to make our life easier. So this is the reason why they uh, 
put together five criteria for unsportsmanlike fouls. And this is the reason why they ask us to use this uh, criteria when we are judging uh, if some contact is unsportsmanlike or not. And this is how they help us to maintain our game control and to manage the game better. So I will now uh, share my screen and uh, we will have a FIBA presentation, which you probably uh, already seen. So, uh, we will just quickly uh, go through this uh, through this uh, presentation, and then we will continue. So, as you see, this is material produced by FIBA, and you all know that we have the def definition of unsportsmanlike foul, and in this definition, it's already these five criteria I've spoken about. So the first criteria is not a legit legitimate attempt to play the ball within the spirit and intent of the rules. Second one is excessive or hard contact on a on a pom opponent or the ball. Third one is unnecessary contact uh, to stop the transition. Fourth one is uh, what we call the last defender, but uh, now FIBA, as you are aware, they changed the, the wording because in the past, this one was uh, very tricky because uh, it was uh, said, okay, I can, I can share also this screen with you so you will, you will be able to see. This is the former um, uh, definition. And it was like contact by the defensive player from behind or lateral on an opponent. And all of you know that defensive player is connected with ball possession. And we had many, many situations when defensive player tapped the ball and technically the ball was still in possession of the opponents, but he was the one running towards the, the opponent's basket and wanted to score and there was a foul and by the previous rules he was not uh, at that moment he was not uh, fouled by defensive players so this criteria wasn't technically good enough so this is why FIBA changed it and they put it now an illegal contact caused by a player from behind laterally on an opponent who is progressing towards the opponent's basket and there is there are no other players between the progressing player, the ball and the basket. So what they did, they changed a defensive player into a player progressing towards the opponent's basket. And now they, they made it legally and technically correct. Um, so the last one is in last two minutes of the fourth period or each extra period when the ball is out of bounds and the contact occurs, it has to be called as unsportsmanlike foul. The thing is very uh, dear sir, yes, the share your screen, please. Oh, it's stop. It. Uh, it's, it's not shared, yes. Sorry, I will try to do it. Okay. Is it okay now? Yes. So the penalty for this kind of foul is two free throws and the possession. And now it depends if it's uh, before the jump ball or if it's during the interval or if the goal was uh, scored and then we have one or two or three free throws and possession and then we uh, put the ball uh, in usually from the free uh, from the throwing line uh, in the front court but there are some situations when we can put it on the center line extend or we even can have jumble after this as i said 
with two unsportsmanlike fouls or with one technical foul and unsportsmanlike foul, a player shall be disqualified for the remainder of the game. Now, let's talk a little bit about five criteria. The first criteria is not a legitimate attempt to play the ball within the spirit and intent of the rules. Uh, there is, you, all of you already met this criteria and in your games you apply it, I believe, with no difficulties because if somebody doesn't like to play the ball, it's obvious and for, especially for people who play basketball and coach basketball, we know when somebody is trying for the ball and, and, and somebody is trying just to distract or to, to stop the opponent by grabbing him for, for some other part of the body uh, different than the ball. Second criteria is uh, if the contact is excessive, hard contact caused by a player either playing the ball or, or, or uh, without the ball. But if this contact is uh, with too much power and if it's dangerous to, to injure a player, then we have to protect the game and players and we need to call or to judge these fouls as uh, a sportsman foul. The third one was the, the new one, which uh, was uh, implemented to because uh, basketball game became too tactical and uh, coaches and players, when they just wanted to stop the transition and they were not in bonus yet, they just made uh, give foul. Uh, and uh, for this reason, the games were slower, there were uh, less uh, points in the games, and then technical committee decided that uh, we need to do something to protect the game and protect the speed of the game and uh, to make game even more attractive. So they said, if you want to play defense correctly, and then in this correct defense, if you make a foul, it's a normal foul, personal foul. But if you just try to stop the transition and just to, to make a contact to make referee to blow the whistle, then it will be uh, judged as unsportsmanlike foul and uh, the penalty will, will be more severe and uh, they will try to discourage players and coaches to use this to stop the game. The fourth criteria we already explained and uh, this applies on uh, player progressing towards the opponent's basket and there is no other uh, players between him and the basket. And then the contact is from the side or from behind. We have to, if we have to call the contact, if affects RSBQ, then we have to call this contact as unsportsmanlike one. Uh, for criteria C3 and C4, uh, the criteria exists until the player in the offense or the player with the ball starts the act of shooting. <coughs> in the moment when player with the ball starts the act of shooting, we cannot apply any more criteria C3 or C4. Still, we can apply criteria C1 and C2. So if the contact is too severe, too hard, or the contact is uh, not on the ball, we will still call unsportsmanlike foul, but we cannot apply this C4 uh, foul from behind or from, uh, from the side or intentionally stopping the transition. The fifth criteria is if it's last two minutes in the fourth period on each extra period and the ball is out of bounds for the throw-in and still in the hands of the official or a player, uh, if defensive team makes a foul, then this foul should be called as a sportsmanlike foul. Uh, usually, this uh, criteria is applied when uh, 
there is a margin between two teams and uh, a losing team is trying to catch up and they try to 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 stop the clock and to get more time to 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 score and to to tie the game or even to win and they try to do it uh, so quickly that uh, sometimes they they just ignore this criteria so what we can do in this in this case as a referees and what we really do in our games if we uh, after time out or uh, when the ball is dead if we go and if we uh, meet players on the court what we usually say is please don't make a foul while the ball is still still in their hands in out of bounds because uh, i have to call you unsportsman i foul and if we use this uh, preventive procedure preventive officiating uh, usually they don't don't do this so i really encourage all of you uh, to to use it as as often as you can because uh, i think actually nobody uh, nobody likes this this uh, situation when you have to call a foul for some normal uh, contact but the ball is in the hands of the thrower in and we have to, to judge it as a sports point foul okay so we have some practical cases and uh, thanks to uh, FIBA and my uh, trip, which was my FIBA education. Uh, <coughs> I have FIBA examples, so let's let's check it and let's uh, comment on all of these uh, cases. So, if you will have some uh, some uh, questions or some, if something is not clear to you. Uh, let's please uh, share it with me, and then we can we can uh, we can discuss it. Okay. So this is the one. I don't know why this one is. Just one second. Okay, so the first example there will be shot and the rebound, and now there will be player trying to take the ball, and you see the, the referee calls a foul, and you will see some surprising faces because the referee called on sportsman like foul. So let's see if the referee was correct or not. Okay, you see the white player 12 is grabbing the shirt or, of the red player and uh, the referee correctly called uh, unsportsmanlike foul. Okay. So one thing i like to to tell you if you will call this foul as unsportsmanlike foul please make sure that it's visible that the shirt is grabbed and that <coughs> this grabbing influences the 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 motion the of of player who was grabbed okay because sometimes we are too fast and we just uh, you know basketball is sport with many contacts and uh, there will be in our games some situations when uh, the shirt will be pulled off just for a split of second and actually 
it will not influence anything. So what we need to do is uh, not to be very fast. We need to analyze this action. And then if we have situation like this one actually is with the shirt, which is really visibly pulled, then this is unsportsmanlike foul. <clears throat> but if this is just for a moment and nothing really happens and nothing influences, then we can just use preventive officiating and we can tell to this player, hey, I saw it, nothing happened, but please make sure you don't use this anymore. Now the second one. Okay. The two big players, Baines and Radulica. And once he secured the ball, there is an elbow in Radulica's chest. Of course, from big guy like Baines, it's very painful. But also Radulica exaggerated a little bit the contact. Anyhow, this contact is not allowed. And this contact is something which by criteria C2, which is hard contact, excessive contact, we should call like an unsportsmanlike foul. Okay. Also, the C1 not playing the ball, but I would rather say that this is C2 excessive and hard contact. The next one. There is transition. And now once the green player is beaten, she tries just to play the white player and to grab her and to stop the transition. So if we like to analyze this situation, then we can use criteria num number one, that the green player is not playing the ball. And criteria number three, that this is unnecessary contact <coughs> to stop the transition. So by these two criteria, this contact is correctly judged as unsportsmanlike foul. Now this is the situation from the end of the game. As you can see, there are 13 seconds, it's two points. And now immediately there is a foul. If you check the foul, okay. Does the white player, number 12, does he plays the ball or he plays just an opponent? Okay, so now you will see the opponent has the ball and white player number 12 is just pushing him from behind. By the definition, he is not playing the ball and this should be judged as unsportsmanlike foul. Of course, what we say now is theory and we try to teach you uh, correct thinking. But for the game spirit and for the everything we like in basketball, with 13 seconds and the result 80-82, we can expect that this player will or this team will try to make very fast the foul. So if we are experienced enough or clever enough, we will come before these free throws and we will tell to these players if you make foul if you like to make a foul please make it make it on the ball so if this number 12 
put his hands towards the ball, then it's not a hard foul, not uh, excessive contact. He plays the ball, it's not transition. The ball was already uh, in the game, not out of bounds. He's not last player, so we, call, we, we should call normal foul. But in this case, the referees, they call normal foul because they, well, they say two points, 13 seconds, I don't want to decide the game. But then the red team, they can ask, yes, but uh, maybe you will decide the game if white team, white team will win. So we need to have the call which is according to the rules. And the rule says, if the player is not playing the ball by criteria C1, this should be unsportsmanlike foul. So I know that this is a very difficult situation to, to call unsportsmanlike foul, but by the rules, when we teach referees, we have to teach them that this is something that is illegal and this is something that it should be judged as unsportsmanlike foul. What we can do as referees or referee coaches is also to teach referees and coaches that this kind of foul is not very smart and that this kind of foul is uh, against their team. So please make one more step and put this ball, put, the, put your hand on the ball and then I will call you normal foul. I hope everybody agree with this. <laughs> I know when this clip uh, came that we had a long discussion whether this should be called normal or unsportsmanlike foul. Okay. Now, we cannot say that this uh, was not playing the ball. He played the ball, but the contact was excessive, too severe. So this was the reason because this should be judged as a sportsmanlike foul. Of course, there, there were some opinions that he played the ball, that this is basketball, this is sport with contact. But we also like to protect players from injuries and we like to not to allow them to, to, to do some, some movements which are too aggressive, you know. So, okay, this is one situation where we can discuss whether this should be called unsportsmanlike or not. But, uh, there are reasons for uh, criteria number two, excessive and hard contact, that there are reasons for us to call it as unsportsmanlike foul. Okay, with the next one, there are no doubts. You will see that uh, the player once beaten, once in the air, he never tried to play the ball, he just tried to stop the opponent. And this is, with no doubt, unsportsmanlike foul. Although Anders is not very happy with the decision, but he knows that this is something which meets criteria for unsportsmanlike foul. Okay. I hope I am not going too fast and I'm not uh, that you can understand what I am talking about. If you have any questions, if you have any opinions, please put it on chat or send to Muhammad and we will we will discuss it. Okay. Now There will be a pass, and after fake, Paul 
will not he was out of balance and he just tried to to stop he knows that he must make a good foul and this kind of foul it's not only good foul it's it meets criteria number two excessive hard contact and this should have been called as unsportsmanlike foul okay you can see that from this position Paul has no chance to play uh, correct defense and he just wants to put Planinic on charity line and this is what he did okay the next one there will be pass fake and after fake the player will not try to save himself or to to stop uh, protect injury or something but he made one more move to make to make sure that the offensive player will not shut and this is the reason why this contact is excessive okay see the right hand make sure that he will not shoot and after the fake this contact is too excessive and this is why it's correctly called as unsportsmanlike foul now we come to criteria number three and you will see now tony parker is trying to go to the fast break and uh, stefan is playing the defense and now i will comment with you some of the elements for this criteria so when tony gets the ball uh, number nine stefan markovic is in legal guarding position between him and his basket and trying to play the defense okay and now when tony will beat him stefan will reach for the ball of course uh, the contact is illegal but this contact doesn't meet criteria for unsportsmanlike foul because number one he played the ball number two it's not too excessive number three it's a legit legitimate attempt to play the ball and to to play the defense and he is not the last player so this is personal foul which is correctly called in this game on the other hand you will see this example <coughs> now there will be a fast break and the player is beaten and with the left hand he just grabs the waist of the opponent and of course she admits a foul and she is actually very happy to to receive only personal foul because <coughs> This should have been called as unsportsmanlike foul. You see, in this photo, it's obvious that a red player never tried to play the ball. She just want, wants to stop the, the offensive player from scoring. different now the red team will get a ball and look now number white 40 is in legal guarding position between the opponent and the basket and he tries to play the defense okay he is leaning forward and this is a blocking foul 
but nothing more. This, this contact doesn't meet criteria C3 for unsportsmanlike foul, and it's correctly judged from the referee as a blocking foul, just a personal foul. If somebody thinks about charge, it's obvious that defensive player is moving forward to offensive player, and this is why this foul is blocking foul. Okay. The next one. This is something that happens uh, rather often. Once the defender is beaten, he makes small contact and immediately raises his hand, admitting the foul. Yes, I made the foul, yes. But by criteria number three, this contact is unnecessary contact to stop the transition. And we have to judge it and we have to call it as a sportsmanlike foul. So if we have a chance to, to speak to players and if we, we have a chance to teach them something, we have to teach them to play the ball, to try for the ball, and then they can stop the transition without uh, big cost, big expense of two free throws and the possession which is penalty for unsportsmanlike foul. Now the white team will have the ball. And you see contact is from behind, but we cannot use criteria number four that the contact is from behind from the simple reason because in the moment of contact i will try to find it and to stop it okay the guy who is making contact the green player is not the last player okay we have his teammate here so we cannot use Criteria number four, foul from behind. So what criteria we can use here? Is this excessive contact? I don't think so. Is this uh, not playing the ball or unnecessary contact in transition? Let's see. And we will be able to see it from different angle. So let's see. If we can, okay. So you can see one small move towards the ball and this move was enough to put the white player out of balance. I don't know if he did it on purpose or not, but <laughs> the fact is that the green player tried for the ball and this is why he tried to play the defense and he tried to play the ball and we, we cannot have criteria. This contact doesn't meet criteria for unsportsmanlike foul. And this is correctly judged as personal foul, okay? So you will see on the photo that his hand is going towards the ball. Maybe this is bad attempt, but this is still attempt to play the ball. So if we have to teach players or coaches how to stop the transition, for sure, number one is try to play the ball. Someone writes on the chat. Uh, I think, Mr. Saratan, uh, the most uh, important element to call the uh, UFA is the position. If you have a good position, you will call it very easily and ob obviously. 
of course, in this case, Ukic didn't try to play the ball. He just grabbed Marcelino and it was incorrect call, just personal foul and it should have been unsportsmanlike foul. Okay. Now, we are talking about criteria number four. Uh, you can see that in this situation, the yellow player is progressing towards the opponent's basket and the blue player cannot position himself between the basket and the yellow player. So the contact comes from the side. We have to call a foul. And by criteria number four, it has to be unsportsmanlike foul. This is not even a judgment. This is by the rule unsportsmanlike foul and of course, Australian coach knows it or believes it and tries to suggest it. Uh, the similar, you will see that the blue player will get a ball. She will go to a fast break and now the white player is not trying to take the legal guarding position and to play the defense. She's just running to bump the blue player. And because there is nobody between blue player and the basket, and because the contact is from the side, it's correctly judged and called a sportsman-like foul. Now it will be one example, not very usual. So the player will stop, <laughs> they will be unintentionally hit from behind. But you know that when we are guarding player with the ball, we need to expect that he can change direction any moment and we are responsible for the contact. So here the contact is on the player who is progressing towards the basket and there is no other players between him and the basket and the contact is from behind and that kind of contact should be judged as unsportsmanlike foul. Now we have the last example and uh, Criteria number five, you will see there will be last 15 seconds of the game and the white team will have the throw in under the basket. Okay, the red team will score now. And the white team will have the throw in under the basket, okay. And now the red team, because losing three points, 25 seconds to go, they try to played the very aggressive defense or to if they make a foul to make it very quick but unfortunately the red player number four is grabbing white player and the contact is now by number 10 the contact is in the moment while the ball is still in the hands of thrower in and there is no other decision by but unsportsmanlike foul. Okay, 
This was about FIBA's examples of unsportsmanlike fouls and uh, how they try to, to teach us about five criteria for unsportsmanlike fouls and uh, how to apply them. And uh, I try to share my opinion about some of them and how to avoid some unpleasant situations and how to give the players a chance or opportunity to play uh, correct defense by preventive officiating. So if you have any questions now or... Uh... Uh, is it finished? Any questions or any suggestions, I will be glad to comment with you. And after that, we, we can have some other clips that we prepared for you. Uh, thank you so much. If there is any question, let me know. I see that in the in the chat, I have a question uh, to explain again new explanation of one sportsman like foul. So I can repeat, if you like, one more time, and I can I can show as well. Uh, I have it here. Okay, so with yellow, it's written and in bulletin number uh, four, an illegal contact caused by the player from behind or laterally on an opponent who is progressing towards the opponent's basket and there are no other players between the progressing player, the ball, and the basket. This applies until the offensive player begins his act of shooting. So they just changed defensive player into, uh, into the player who is progressing towards the opponent's basket. So I can show you how it was before. Okay. Contact by the defensive player from behind or laterally on an opponent in an attempt to stop the fast break. Okay, this was the wording before. And there is no defensive player between the offensive player and the opponent's basket. Okay, this was before. But as we explained, when the player simply taps the ball, he is still not yet offensive player. He is still defensive player because the possession changes when there is control of the ball by, by, by defensive player. So if there is only tap and the player is progressing to the basket and there is a contact before, Technically, it was not unsportsmanlike foul by wording, by the rules. But now FIBA changed it and they say uh, illegal contact from behind on lottery on opponent who is progressing. So they don't mention offensive or defensive player. Okay, now it's not important anymore. So now they gave the chance if the guy just tapped the ball and he is running and it's obvious that he will pick the ball up and score and he is stopped by illegal contact, they now uh, made it possible for us to call it unsportsmanlike foul. Okay? I hope that I, I clarified this. this uh, it's not even a rule change. It's it's just uh, better better wording. Uh, if there is uh, uh, okay question, now please. I think the most important element to call the unsportsmanlike foul is the position. If you have good position, you will call it very easily and obviously. This is opinion from Aya, and I agree. I agree with you, but uh, I think that in today's mechanics on the court, 
we need to work as a team. So if uh, one of us who is, let's say, trailed new lead and he is not uh, fast enough or he is not in the best position and he is not able to judge it, then he has his two partners to assist. So this is why, especially in Euroleague games, but also in, in FIBA competition, you can see that after these kind of fouls, the referees will come together. They will have a small meeting. They will say to each other their opinion. And then if somebody is really positive, if he is sure that the contact meets criteria for unsportsmanlike foul, they can make this decision together. But of course, the decision will be made upon the opinion of the guy who had the open angle to see the contact and to see the whole situation. Of course, today we have possibility to use instant replay for these situations. Because if we are not uh, certain, if we are not sure, we can call a foul and we can go and, and check on instant replay to see if the foul meets criteria for a sportsman like foul or not. So I agree that that position on the court is very important, but also uh, this is another question. This is part of the mechanics. And uh, I, I really do believe that we need to call only from open angles and we need to do our best to position ourselves in, in open angles. But if we don't have open angle, then it's better not to make decision because some of our colleagues will probably have the open angle and we as a crew, we will make the correct decision. Okay, now from uh, Same Estefanos. I would like to give us your opinion about case, which it's last seconds of the game and the team wants to stop the game by foul after basket by push a player, try to stop the game. That now is unsportsmanlike foul. It's a big problem in our competition in Egypt. Yes, I understand that uh, sometimes it can be the problem, but as I said, we need to prevent. We cannot uh, do anything on the court. On the court, if this is <coughs> if this is a foul, we need to judge it by FIBA rules. So if the thrower in has the ball and the foul al already occurred, we need to call it. I had uh, one one game in Adriatic competition, and. Uh, it was the first year when this, this rule was introduced and uh, one team was leading by five and it was last, I believe, 20 seconds of the game and uh, the opponents had the ball in the front court after the timeout. And one guy was trying to play the defense and he tried to pass the screen and he, he, he pushed the screener, the screener fell down, and I called the foul. <coughs> when I turned, I saw the, that the ball is still in hands of the thrower in. So I was thinking, why would defender who is winning five points, 20 seconds before the end of the game, why would he make unsportsmanlike foul? And then I said, mm, is this the case for unsportsmanlike foul? Mm, I'm not sure. So I called normal foul. And then the coach of this team that was losing by five and that was uh, with the ball, he asked me why this was not unsportsmanlike foul. And I said, because they are leading five points and this is only when you are trying to catch the score. Ah, sorry, I didn't know. So the game finished and my uh, commissioner came and he said, why this was not a sportsmanlike foul? I said, because when the team is leading five points and it's 20 seconds to go, 
this rule doesn't apply. This is only for, for uh, when the when, uh, team is trying to catch the score. And he said, ah, oh, okay. And then the director of the competition called and he said, why this was not a sportsman like foul? And I tried to explain to him, to him and he said to me, uh, come on, don't bullshit me. This should be unsportsmanlike foul. And then he said also to commissioner, and then I said also to coach, oh, sorry, I made a mistake because uh, this rule should be applied. Doesn't matter if somebody is uh, leading five points or losing five points. So this is the rule, and if foul meets criteria, we have to call it. So uh, if you have problem in, in your country, I think that the best thing is to connect your referees association with the coaches association, with federation, with players association, and that you work together and that you explain to them the rules and that uh, you prevent these fouls, which, which comes simply because players doesn't know that this, this, this rule exists. Uh, so, I see you have some clips, but before that, I also have some clips for you. So, <laughs> Muhammad, I suggest that we proceed with the clips that we prepared, and then we can, we can uh, if we have time, we can discuss some clips that somebody wants to share with us, okay? Yes, it's good. Uh, keep going on. Please. Is it okay? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Uh, yeah, keep going on, please. Thank you. Yeah. So now I will share the screen with uh, the other presentation. This is the one. These are clips from uh, Euroleague, from Adriatic League, and from French Championship. So let's see what's going on, okay? So this is exactly why FIBA changed uh, this rule, this criteria number three. So if we analyze this situation, look now, Frizon is dribbling the ball and now Vialchev will take the ball, still <coughs> the white player he doesn't have control of the ball. So technically, a red team is still in the offense. And now there is a contact and there is a foul. So actually, this should be offensive foul because Prison is red player, is making the foul on a white player while he is still in the offense. By the new rules, by the FIBA uh, change, change uh, this is now the white player is player progressing towards the opponent's basket. And doesn't matter if he is defensive or offensive player. This contact by Frizon should be considered by criteria number three as unsportsmanlike foul. I hope you understand now the, the meaning of this rule now. See, he didn't have the control yet. Okay. Situation. This is from Adriatic League. Now there will be That team will take the ball and there will be a foul. They know that the white player still, the, the red player still didn't have the possession. <coughs> so they just wanted to, to go and check the instant replay. See, nobody has from the from the red team, nobody has the possession. So actually, this was foul of the offensive team. But by the new wording from FIBA, this is foul on a player who is progressing towards the opponent's basket. And this is by C3 
criteria number three, this, is, this should be unsportsmanlike foul. Okay. Now, we have situation when the referee, who is probably in a very good angle, but maybe too close, he is trying to, he, he called a sports flag foul. <laughs> of course, we have benefit to go and check if this is really a sports flag foul. When we discussed before the IRS check, uh, he said the defensive player never played the ball. So we said, okay, let's go to see IRS. Let's go and check whether he played the ball or not. So we came to IRS and there is, look, Westerman, look. So maybe because of exaggerating of offensive player, the lead referee was a little bit tricked, but we went to IRS and we downgraded in a personal foul. Okay, the next one. In this case, if we want to analyze this uh, situation, look, the guy already has the ball. That means that he is even offensive player. Okay, defensive player is in legal guarding position, but there is nobody between him and the basket. So that means that he is the last player. The contact is from the side, not on the ball. So we can call, we have to call unsportsmanlike foul by two criteria. The first criteria is C1 because he is not playing the ball. And the second criteria is C4 because there is nobody between black player and the and uh, the basket and he is progressing towards the basket okay the ne next one Now, we have lead referee calling personal foul and we have trail referee calling unsportsmanlike foul. If you will listen, discussion. So, if you see or if you hear the explanation, <coughs> the referee said it can be dangerous for the offensive guy. But when we are judging unsportsmanlike fouls, we, we cannot judge if something is possible to happen or it's intention by, by the player or no. We just have to judge what really happened on the court. So, if we want to analyze this contact, the white nine, the black 22 jumped in the air, but after he jumped in the air, did he make any, any aggressive movement? Did he put his hands down? Did he try to, to stop? No, he was just with his body trying to, to, to protect himself, to, to safely land or, 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 or to do something to avoid the injury, nothing more. So because of that, look, 
there is no excessive hard contact and this is why this is simply like lead referee said and one and this should be called as personal normal foul but unfortunately the trail referee came out of blue and he he just uh, gave us his view of the situation and he he persuaded his colleagues to call this as unsportsmanlike foul which i believe was incorrect okay the next one there will be a drive and after that the white player is showing to referees go and check irs because i think my defense was <coughs> correct and it was a foul but not unsportsman like foul so uh, i'm really interested in your opinion and when we finish watching clips you can give me your opinion about this so i will not say my opinion i will let you give your or you can put it on chat as well the next one <coughs> you will see that the ball will be on the floor and that a couple of players will throw themselves to catch the ball and then oh okay sorry this is another one so you will see from the leads angle that perperoglu will never try to play the defense or play the ball he will just try to smack the look this is excessive contact this is hard foul and uh, i believe that this decision was correct call and the referees did a good job the next one okay we can see that position of the referee in this case is not the best one but but he can see that there is a contact and that of course contact is from the side and this is why this is unsportsmanlike foul like our colleague before put on the chat we need good position of the referee okay if we analyze there are two down this is trail referee and he is in a free throw line extended the center referee is even lower the lead referee is in the middle so this position is probably confusing for all of them so now when there is a deflection and there is a transition i think that trail referee is in really bad position because he was also turned on the other side so he first has to turn and then he has to run and he cannot see if this contact is foul or not so probably we can have help from the center if he is fast enough to to help because he has probably the angle but if there is a contact we should call this should be our sportsman like foul because it's last last player and uh, and he is progressing towards the basket the next one very clear to everybody that black jersey player number 50 never tried to play the ball he just tried to stop the fast break and this should be unsposed for like foul the next one <coughs> we can say that this contact is both excessive and not really playing 
playing the ball. So if we don't call this one as a sportsmanlike foul, we have big issues with controlling the game because it can be retaliation after and uh, we will have really big issues about behavior on the court. Okay, the next one. <clears throat> It's also connected with, uh, with mechanics. Uh, you will see now that the center referee actually cannot see if this player is playing the opponent or he is trying the ball. So the only one or the two of them is trail and lead. And when the trail is sure that there is only personal foul, he is going there to share his vision, his opinion. And then after that, they will go to check. They will make sure that this is not legitimate attempt to play the ball, that he is just playing for the body. And it, after IRS, it will be upgraded to unsportsmanlike foul. Okay. Just one, one tip, if you are the part of the crew on the court and you know something and you saw something which your partners didn't see and you see that probably their decision will be incorrect because of this, don't say this for the locker room and don't go to locker room and say, hey, I think maybe that contact should have been called as a sportsman life foul, no. <laughs> go immediately on the court, have a small meeting, discuss the things, and then make the correct decision, all three of you. This is exactly what we did here. Now, with this situation, we have <coughs> several issues. First of all, it's transition. We need to know if the green player played the ball. We need to know if he played the, uh, if he made the contact before the act of shooting or not. And now, first of all, he did play the ball. So that makes a normal foul. And second, He made his foul before the act of shooting. So, so the decision is personal foul on the floor. And this is what the decision was, personal foul on the floor. And the explanation for the coach, he played the ball, coach accepted, and that was it. And you know, this is a big game. This is EuroLeague playoffs. So, so the white player was beaten and the normal foul was called. But the problem was so let's see. You will see the the right foot up, and this hit by the foot is by C2 by Excessive contact, it's unsportsmanlike like foul. And now there is explanation and decision, and that's it. Okay, this is something which is not fair. We don't want this on the courts, so we need to call this as unsportsmanlike like foul. Next one. Now there will be some players on the floor.
okay what's the the situation here that i like to 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 share with you the first thing when something like this happens on the court when there is altercation which means there is possibility that there will be a fight what referees must do is separate the players and this is exactly what they did look two of them separated the players even three and one of them checked the benches in this case because as you know nobody is allowed to come on the court why is this important because in this situation we can go and check irs we can have a small meeting before but the most important is that we don't make decisions during the, this, this situation. Okay? Don't call now in the moment when they are on the floor. Don't call technical fouls or unsportsmanlike fouls or disqualifying fouls. Wait. We have time. We have to separate players. And after that, we can go to IRS, we can check and who was responsible for this and we can make our decisions, okay? Now they will check slowly, they will see what happened and they will make the decision. So finally, they had unsportsmanlike foul for this elbow on the floor, he got an unsportsman life foul. Okay, now, is this normal basketball move or just attempt to stop the transition? Is this trying to play the defense? I believe not. It was just body bump and because it's in transition by the C3, this is unsportsmanlike foul. The next, okay, why the player is protesting? Because I believe the referee, the lead referee, he thought, because the, the, the blue player just swing, he thought it will be big contact. But finally, it was not. And this is why, look, okay, the contact was in the head. So if the judgment, by the judgment of the referee, this contact in the head was dangerous or was severe or was uh, uh, too strong, then we can go for unsportsmanlike foul. But what I wanted to, to, to say to you is, uh, Put your air in your bellies. Don't put your air in your mouth. Because if you put the air in your mouth, if, if you make your decision quickly, then you will sometimes, you will not be lucky and you will make mistakes. So, That the foul is excessive, then you can raise the other hand and make signal for unsportsmanlike foul. But don't get hurry, okay? Okay, so. Let's see couple more there is foul with something which happened after the foul nobody is really certain what what happened okay so we need to go to check of course, the first is to separate the players. And then to finish the things. 
So what, why I chosen this clip was that after the decision, the way to communicate is to invite both coaches to explain to them what really happened, what will be the decision. And if they have some questions or something, now is the time. But it's always easier to explain and to discuss with two people than to explain and to discuss with all the players, with both coaches, with, with, with everybody, okay? So if you have some difficult situations with multiply penalties or with difficult decisions, this is the suggestion. Invite coaches, speak to them, explain to them, and then you can continue with your game. It's much easier than to speak with many people. Okay, so this is what we prepared. Now, Thank you so much. I'm sure that you have a lot of questions. I'm at your disposal for questions or clips or whatever. Uh, yes, there are some questions, maybe. Uh, let me check. Uh, Mr. Hadi says uh, there are some elements inside this C3. Criteria three, as the rules mention it. Yes. If uh, one of the us not happen, uh, the contact uh, should be called as personal. Yeah, right. If one correct? of us not happen, the contact should be. Yeah. If if there is no contact, we 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 cannot say nothing. Okay. Sometimes we we can even say nothing happened. My my mistake. Sometimes this is honest, but at least we cannot go with unsportsmanlike foul. If nothing happened, we go with personal foul. Or if there is a small contact, we go with personal foul. Is this, was this the question? Uh, uh, one of them want to share us Yes. A couple of clips, yes, to uh, comment it. Okay, uh, you can share it, Mr. Navid. So it's, it's very difficult to see this situation. If you can stop in the moment of contact, it would yes, be uh, helpful. Play it uh, to the end or uh, stop it on the situation, contact situation. Okay, see? so this is similar similar clip to the one from FIBA when I said we need to use preventive officiating. If they want to make foul, make sure that make, they make foul to the ball. So as I, I see the explanation here, no legitimate attempt to play the ball, but I think that we should be smart and we should avoid this, these things by preventive officiating. Okay. 
and with working with with these with players and coaches and clubs. Hello, everybody. Hello. Thanks, dear Mr. Rahimi, for international reference webinar, and special thanks to Mr. Radovic. Uh, we have a challenge about uh, this situation in our country. And in the first clip, uh, when when the lead referee is uh, called to personal call, the crew chief uh, uh, have a uh, told with this and uh, he said uh, you should uh, tell about uh, this situation on sport my life call what's your opinion uh, dear mr rado uh, the crew i would like can change the i would okay. like if you can i would like if you can uh, stop in the moment of contact this clip yes sir Play yes, sir. And yes sir. stop in the moment of the contact Right here. A little bit, li little bit before, please. A little bit before. Okay, sir. Just a little bit. Is it correct? Okay. For me, okay. for me, you cannot be sure that the first contact is not playing the ball. Because okay. for me, the white player is going towards the ball, and then when the red player pivots, he uh, he makes the white player looks that he doesn't like to play the ball. But I think that what white player initially he tried for the ball. Yes. Sir. So this is this is number one. Number two, this situation is one. 100% responsibility of the lead referee. So I okay. don't understand uh, in situation, okay, if something is really black and white, like there is hit in the, in the arm or in the face and the lead referee doesn't see it and center referee can see it, he can help. But in, in situation like this, when there is judgment, if he played the ball or not, I believe that lead referee has much better angle, much better position and <coughs> closer. And he doesn't have four players in between. So if I am center referee in this case, I, I would never come to lead referee to say anything. If, if it was me. Okay. But I don't know, I don't know the, the situation, so I, I can just comment the clip. Uh, in your opinion, crew chief can help to the other referees or uh, he should uh, just uh, do the rules? Yes, crew chief, crew chief must help uh, the other referees, but crew chief must find the correct situations to help to his partners. Otherwise, he cannot just go there and say, I'm crew chief, I will make decision. No. He must apply also same criteria, same rules, and he must be even the, 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 the best referee and, and, you know, the most experienced referee, and then he can help with his experience, with his knowledge, but not just like, you know, I'm big boss and I will now, you know, help. So... Thanks a lot, dear Mr. Radovich. Thanks a lot. When, when you are crew chief, you try to, to, to have uh, respect from your partners, from your colleagues. And the best respect uh, from them you will have if you respect them. So you must respect the position of your partner. You must respect his knowledge. You must respect everything. Okay. If 
he missed something, you can go there and you can you can tell him his opinion. <coughs> but you cannot you cannot officiate for him, especially in this situation. This situation for me is not for her. <coughs> Thank you so much. Uh if there is uh, another question, let me know, please. Aya, you raised your hand. Uh, do you have any question? If you have, let me know to open your mic. No, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Adovich. Uh, that was so great. Uh, it's my big pleasure to have you. And uh, thank you so much for taking out your precious time for us. And uh, stay safe, everybody, during this pandemic. Uh, hope uh come back again to, G to court, me as a coach and you all as a referee. Thank, thank you, you for inviting me and... Uh... All of you stay healthy, stay safe, and hope to see you soon. One question, uh, oh, questions coming. Okay, uh, okay, we can go. Uh, dear Mr. Radovich, please explain more that how can a commissioner help to make correct decision? <laughs> okay, there are some things that commissioner can, can help in some things. So, for example, <clears throat> if there are substitutions, if there are timeouts, if there are, I don't know, something that referees didn't see when there is fighting, when there is stuff like this. But if something is a foul or not, I don't believe that commissioner should interfere. There are three referees on the court and that should be enough. Uh, so I believe that commissioner is part of the team and he can help referees, but only what they agree at the pregame conference. So about procedural things, about uh, time, about score, about substitutions, about protocols and everything else. This is how commissioner can help to referees. Also, if commissioner is able to see that one crucial shot is two points and the referee said it's three points maybe if they have possibility to check instant replay and the commissioner can say are you sure that he didn't touch the line or stuff like this you know just to 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 help him but he cannot cannot push him cannot make any decisions for him because uh, referees for them because referees are three of them on the court and they they should be enough uh, okay that's it uh thank you so much uh again for taking out your precious time and uh thank you everybody to join us and uh, hope have a have another topics with you uh sure. that was so great uh stay safe all have a good time thank you thank you bye 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 <laughs>